Hey everyone, Brad here today from the OFA Heritage Center. Now, as you may see around me, it's early spring. And with early spring comes a return of our topic today, migratory birds. So stick around as we explore the fascinating world of migratory birds. Bird migration is the regular seasonal movement, usually north and south, of birds between breeding and wintering grounds. Many species of birds migrate. Migration brings with it many perils and is driven mainly by the availability of food, warmer weather, and habitat for breeding purposes. Around 400 native bird species regularly make use of Ontario's natural and human-modified landscapes for at least part of their annual cycle. These species are collectively referred to as migratory birds. Migratory birds include warblers, wading birds, songbirds, shorebirds, raptors, waterfowl, and even hummingbirds. About 80% of all bird species who are native to Ontario migrate. In order to have enough energy to survive migration, birds need to enter a state called hyperphagia. Hyperphagia is a state where birds will bulk up on food in the weeks leading up to migration to store fat that they can use for the taxing energy needed for migration. Migration involves long journeys, and flight is one of the most demanding forms of locomotion, or movement, with days of continuous flapping of the bird's wings with no chance to rest. This requires migratory birds to store these large deposits of fat prior to departure. Some birds, like the black pole warbler, almost double their body weight before flying 3,700 kilometers non-stop, which can take them up to 90 hours. Can you imagine doubling your weight and having to make such a journey? The idea of this is astounding. In the fall, black pole warblers fly non-stop from the east coast of Canada over the Atlantic Ocean to their wintering grounds in northern South America and the Caribbean. In the spring, they don't make the same epic transoceanic flight. Instead, they stop over in the Caribbean islands and continue north over land to their breeding grounds far north in the boreal forest. As I mentioned before, Migration can be a dangerous time for migratory birds, and many do not survive the round-trip journey. Sometimes, natural occurrences like weather play a factor in this danger, but many times, human activity can also play a factor. In the United States each year, up to a billion birds die from window collisions alone. As humans, we can help to limit this danger by applying regularly spaced markers on glass which can tell birds that there is a barrier to avoid, and it is the best way for you to help prevent collisions. There are many other small measures that you can also take to help reduce collisions, such as turning off lights when you're not in rooms, closing curtains or blinds when rooms are not in use, and keeping houseplants away from windows. During migration, birds' heart rates can increase by up to 400%, and their core body temperature has been recorded to be as high as 44.4 degrees Celsius in flight. This overheating can cause birds to stop flying, which can create further dangers if the environment is not suitable for landing or if birds run into a predator. This is one of several reasons for many species to migrate during the nighttime. Which brings me to my next fact. Many migratory birds, but not all, fly at night. They navigate in the dark. That's right, when you're in bed napping, their wings are flapping. Why? First, colder air temperatures reduce the danger of overheating and allow birds to fly further without having to stop and cool down. Equally important, dark skies tend to hold fewer predators. But for birds migrating at night, it's riskier than it used to be. Most notably, the steady burning lights on top of communication towers attract and disorient birds. Television, radio, and cell towers cause up to 7 million bird collisions each year in North America, and many of these occur during migration periods. 
Just like people use highways, migratory birds, such as ducks and geese, often follow specific pathways called flyways to get from one area to another. Research using bird bands was used to define four migratory flyways in North America. The Pacific Flyway, Central, Mississippi, and Atlantic. These four flyways have some overlap and some bird species will use a different flyway to travel north in the spring than they will take to fly south in the winter. But these flyway travel paths remain the same year over year. Ontario overlaps with two of these flyways, the Atlantic Flyway and the Mississippi Flyway. It's incredible, but did you know that many migratory birds can make it back to the same spot that they were born each year? Scientists know that migratory birds navigate using the sun during the day, stars at night, and the Earth's geomagnetic field at any time. Some species can even detect polarized light, which many migrating birds may use for navigation at night. But exactly how they do this remains a mystery, partly because migrating birds use a combination of these senses. Physical landmarks such as mountain ranges, river valleys, and coastlines are used by several birds to guide them. Others travel more directly, even if this means crossing dangerous stretches of desert or sea. For example, some smaller birds cross large bodies of water wherever possible by continuous flapping, while many larger birds will opt for the narrowest points of crossing. Scientists can now accurately track these travels thanks to the use of tiny geolocator or GPS backpacks that transmit birds' locations. This information sheds new light on migration while helping to pinpoint locations in need of conservation efforts. Ontario is home to species of the tern family who are related to gulls. One tern species, whose migration can bring them through the furthest northern reaches of Ontario, is called the Arctic Tern. The Arctic Tern has the longest migration of any bird in the world. These black-capped, red-billed birds can fly up to 90,000 kilometers in a single year. Making a round trip between their breeding grounds in the Arctic and the Antarctic, where they spend their winters. Over its lifespan, which can be up to 35 years, these flights can add up to the equivalent of three trips to the moon and back. Can you imagine how much flying that is? That's it for this month's installment of Fascinating Facts. Thank you for joining us. And thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and comment below. Don't forget to check out the resources section on our webpage. There, you'll find free printable resource material, like mini lessons and activity pages to follow up the virtual lesson. And please subscribe to stay connected as we learn together outside the classroom.